wow, what a weird world we are in with a lens cap as a firmware update. I wonder what magic the lens cap can do. All right, so update. Finally got the uh, lens adapter for the Sony E-mount, which took, I don't know, a couple few weeks. I didn't know that they would be so behind on that, but they are. And uh, But I got lucky to get in. B&H had like a tiny pre-order. I'm assuming the window was like a, a couple days, and then uh, I nailed it in there. So this just arrived yesterday, which would be Wednesday, I think it was like the 8th or 9th, uh, let's see, it would be the 9th, so, and I've heard people still can't find them and stuff, so when that pre-order opens, you gotta just nail it and just be on it, <clears throat> but other than that, yeah, finally got to run it yesterday and today. And uh, it is a little beefy, but not too beefy. <laughs> um, I would say for anybody that's looking at this camera to be like, like your one all, you got to be kind of uh, good, strong, like shoulders, and because um, it's it's probably over ten pounds rigged up, and that's not even with like the expansion plate that's going to go on this that that runs the monitor there's going to be another expansion plate that runs xlr cables i mean i don't see those being a lot more weight but just little things like that do add up uh handle wise like this this sits really nice like against your body so being like if uh like in a neutral position this is great and the fact that it's flat on the back feels real nice. Um, other than that, holding it like top handle wise, I mean, you gotta be pretty, I would say good forearm strength. <laughs> uh, you know, cause this, this will tie, this will start getting on the wrist for sure. And then when you fire up the 4D part, uh, it does wanna like tilt forward and stuff. So keep those in mind. Uh, another interesting thing, I would say the fact that the gimbal only has two adjustments, so you can go forward and backward here, and then you can go forward and backward on this axis, but you can't go up and down, and the weird part of that is, is this guy is really top heavy, and so if I let this free, you'll notice it wants to go just slam down or slam back, which on an, uh, any of the other Ronin series, you would just slide this back and forth. So, I mean, I'm sure DJI knows about that, so the, I'm assuming the motors are strong enough to handle that, but it's just be, you know, when you turn this off, this thing's just gonna wanna flip forward or back, depending on how heavy the lens is. Uh, what else? I haven't got to do much with this. I'm just doing a quick little follow-up video just to, uh, answer a couple questions uh, like how usable um, you know just as like a run and gun person this camera does everything I that you could need to do on a lot of different job types I want to integrate this into a wireless system for my live production as a roaming stage camera or some kind of roaming just because you could walk and move with this and they're claiming such a far range with the wireless, but we'll see when I get to test that because I haven't even got the monitor yet. Um, uh, I guess I can just fire it up. Let's see, make sure everything is loose. See that like just wants a throwback. All right, let's see. Yeah, uh, startup time on this guy is probably like, uh, I feel like it's like 20 seconds or something. So it's got a little bit of like computing going on. It's not like immediately turns on, but it's not like a ridiculous amount of time. I don't know, I've, every camera I had usually just fires up and it's, it goes. 
let's see yeah and it's ready to go so right now this is just in uh, just the regular gimbal mode something's beeping why are you beeping do you not like something that was the weirdest thing I've never heard okay gimbal locked Oh, my fuck up. Okay, so if you don't unlock everything, we just learned something, that it just beeps at you, and then you find out that you have to unlock one more. There's a lot of locking and unlocking on this thing, so get used to locking and unlocking a lot. Okay, so a little menu pops up. That was really quick, actually. So it just went to hibernate or uh, like a sleep mode, and then the second I confirmed on the menu, you just it just wakes back up. All right, so now that we're back in, yeah, this thing feels really nice. <laughs> like uh, product, uh, everything smooth that you you would need a slider or anything. This thing will definitely replace that. There are a little bit of like the weight, I'd say the weight's the only thing. If you're used to heavier rigs, you'll be fine. Uh, I did like the Philip Bloom, uh, use the ready rig, which I have one of those. This guy, this is gonna be the combo for sure. So running the rig with uh, that, with the single arm, that'll definitely do, that'll do the trick. Cause I, I don't know, that, that fishing pole over the top thing, I, I have not got myself to want to do that. <laughs> I know it's probably like super good and useful, but um, the ready rig just made more sense. Cause I had like the big ring, uh, like, you know, the big ass steering wheel looking uh, gimbal style for a while and that was just too ridiculously huge this thing is the best answer I've ever seen for trying not to be like the most big thing if you do like events and stuff like it's those things were just too large and in a commercial space or like where you're it's designed for shooting then it's fine this would be a little more run and gun but it will get uh, it will get heavy <laughs> So you gotta learn tricks with it. Um, let's see, what else can we cover? Like I said, I still gotta do some tests on this. I'm just popping this up for just to to give a little bit of content. Kind of, you know, I know that there's obviously a tons of videos out there, but I wanted to follow up, and then my next one will probably be a more maybe just B-roll side of it. Um, I do really love the follow function on this, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, you could walk around, this would be your camera operator. This will, and you don't like, like this shot right here, like I'm stuck here, like wherever I go, that's it. But this thing, like I almost wanna, I might swap just to show that as a test. And also I kinda wanted to show the audio quality on this is actually, it's not bad. It sounds better than any other. I don't even know where the hell the mic is on this thing. But it sounds, uh, it's, it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's the best or like, you know, audio, like audio specific people are going to be like, it's not probably that bit good. But I would, if I had to use it, I could use it. All right, so I'm going to switch from this and we're going to rotate. Actually, uh, actually, uh, uh, okay, let me restart that. Okay, so I'm gonna switch these. This is gonna go on the tripod, and then you're gonna hear the audio from the 4D, and also I'm gonna do a little bit of tracking just so you can kind of see how responsive it is. And yeah, we'll go from there. I'm definitely gonna need a beefier tripod like this. Than the little tiny photo one I have for the A7S III, because uh, yeah, this is a really heavy camera. So, but as far as I know, that uh, when you put a shoe on this, it it does get uh, like it blocks the sensors for the for the 4D part. 
but I guess that wouldn't matter because it's on a tripod. So other than that, I guess gimbal, other rig styles, is it's going to make a difference. But yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. Another thing I did on accident, which I didn't know, which was funny, uh, there's like this like lock off button uh, where it just turns off the gimbal. And when I turned it on, I was like, oh man, I must have broke it already, which is weird. But yeah, it just completely like turns the gimbal off while the camera's still on, which is probably super useful for locking it off and then putting a heavier lens on. So that's very easy. Honestly, the button configuration on this is, it's genius. Every single button has a purpose and that is like for real. Every, the double click up front right center, this guy double click turns on the 4D, turns off the 4D. Um, exposure, you got manual mode that just immediately autofocus mode, which is on the, the wheel side. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. So I'm gonna turn that back on. Actually, I'm gonna lock this. Like I said, a lot of locking. So get used to where these lockers are. Cause when you just have to do shit, Let's see, okay, so if we get a plate, would that be centered? It does want to like tilt forward. I notice it doesn't really have like a super centered feel to it. Um, and I haven't even put like the, I have a 24 to 70 that's compatible that I want to test on here. And I need to probably get the counterweight. It says on the site it needs a counterweight. So, yeah. That'll be that. Let's see how much, yeah, it's blocking both the sensors as you can see. So there's no real way around it, but you're not also not gonna be using the 4D, the fourth access, XE. All right, so switching over from A7S3 to 4D. Man, it's a lot of work to film a camera on top of a camera, on top of another camera. <laughs> I'm, not used to, I'm used to just working. But I guess this is work too, right? All right, so we are transferred over. <clears throat> okay, so now, all right, now we are on the 4D so this is the audio quality. I'm in a room with a fair amount of stuff in it, so it's not like a hollow box, and it also doesn't have sound, um, you know, pads or anything. There are two lights uh, that do have some fan noise that are really close. So you could be picking that up like a refrigerator right now, but if not, right on. I think I actually have to draw a box around my face, which is a lot harder than you think. Yep, wait, is that it? Yeah, we want to track. Hey, there we go. Cool, so, yeah, like I said, it's, it's following pretty decently. So what it's doing though, it looks like it's trying to keep me in like the third of the frame. It's like completely upside down and backwards for me. But like if I wanted to pick up, it's ready rig case and then I was like hey we had to go over here and talk about something and then now we're over here talking about something I don't know it's just that's a very useful camera operator that's a really good camera operator um, but yeah subject tracking like it's staying with me really well I mean the lighting I'm getting closer to the light so it's probably gonna get you know, a little bit more, but I mean, it's quick. <laughs> it's not trying to like lose me. So I guess like cooking show people would just be like cooking, you know, cooking shit. And then you could walk around and then you don't need a camera operator. <laughs> but okay, so yeah, that's the tracking. I was really happy with it. I definitely see it being useful for a lot of things. I mean, look, this shot angle, now I'm up, I would be scrunched here because I'm trying to keep everything here. But what if I just wanted to stand up? Now I can stand up. So I need two of these to review this one. 
as a solo camera operator. But, um, yeah, that, that's everything for now. Um, I'm going to switch back over to uh, the A7S III. I'm just enjoying this tracking. This is ridiculous. I mean, you could just sit here and just goof off with this freaking tracking because it's like, it's so good. Even though I'm in like this little tight area, the fact that I can just like go anywhere, like anywhere, and then it's like, it does a damn good job of finding me. Impressive. Alright. Alright, so we're back over to this side of the world. Uh, so yeah, there's the difference in the audio, like I said. I mean, you can tell me in the comments what you think about the audio uh, quality coming straight out of this camera. I've definitely heard crappier, like GoPro always sounds like some kind of tin can. I, I haven't had one since like the Hero 5, so I don't know if it's gotten better, but other than that, uh, the A7S 3 you know, if you had to use it in a pinch, but I think this one's better for just a built-in camera. And I, like I said, I don't even know where the hell this mic is at, so it could be just a pinhole somewhere. I'll find it. But yeah, so that's it for now. Um, I need to do a few more tests in the field, like outside, like with the ND filters, kind of feel in dynamic range. Uh, you know, running around with it for longer periods of time. As of now, I could just tell that uh, it is a heavier rig. So you're gonna feel a little bit in the low back. Uh, handle placement though, because it's evenly distributed, might make a little bit of a difference. Cause like I said, you could put it against your body. But um, yeah, oh, I haven't even busted out the old four, the old, uh, where's it at? Oh, wrong one. We haven't even got to see it pop up, dude. Boom. See how it wants to drift forward, though? And it's probably freaking out because the... Actually, no, I got to I do have the plate underneath it, so it's still... It's still doing its job. But yeah, this thing is intense, dude. Like, this thing... <laughs> like... Yeah, it's gonna be sick for a lot of stuff. And honestly, like the slight air motion that you get, you could like lock this thing off and then just walk and it'll stay there. And you could just hold it sideways, walk like that, and boom, you could just bang out six slider shots. Uh, but yes, it does want to curve. Like here, if I hold it sideways, this is just how the weight is just, this is all just off of one finger. And that is as close as I can get to the front. So it is going to want to drift down. So if your wrist positions like that instead of like a more of a neutral. So know that that's going to do that no matter what. And if, especially when you start adding a counterweight and a, maybe a little bit bigger of a lens or even the manual motor, follow focus motor, those are all going to play a factor. Quick follow up. Yeah, so I'm not like full YouTube uh, brain when I film things. I'm uh, so used to filming other things as projects and not really used to filming myself. So I noticed I kept looking up at the monitor the whole time, which I should be looking forward, but I was just too set on like, is everything staying in frame? Or, so if I chose to keep going this route, obviously I'd learn uh, to not look up, to look into the camera. But yeah, thanks uh, for watching and hope that was enough for now to kind of go over, uh, you know, what I think of the camera as of now. I still need to go do tests in the field, but um, yeah, I'm liking it. It's, it's gonna be a s pretty sick rig. Uh, it's heavy. And, and, not too heavy but it's it's right it's right on the cusp so uh thanks for watching and uh leave a comment below uh what you want to see next uh if you got any more questions and stuff like that i'm always open to you know going over whatever <laughs>
So uh, thanks. Have a good one.